Wow, the mystery vortex is controlled by giant magnets buried under the Earth's crust. I'm strangely saddened by our callous shattering of a cherished American myth. Get over it. Okay. here before we lose our corporeal bodies forever. Punks. And we're overachievers. That's cool, man. I'm Shavul. What do you want with me? Hey, Sam, look. Well, this bottled water is a real letdown. Nothing. Wow, me neither. Is this your ring? looking for this. Just lucky, I guess. Then I guess I should tell you to head for Frog Rock. Where's that? Well, it's near the biggest ball of twine in the world. Between the world's largest stump and the eternal plain of acid rain. Is that all? That's just the start, man. Once you're at Frog Rock, you'll need some samples. Samples? Yeah, man. Bigfoot samples. You know, fur and stuff. Three of them. Smear them all over Frog Rock. Put the fur on the rock. Got it. Let's go, Max. Wait! You'll also need some Mystic Mole Man powder. You must be joking. No joke, man. Here, I'll get you some. Here 
you go. Sprinkle this mystic mole man powder over the fur when you've smeared it all over Frog Rock. What'll happen then? Something wonderful. Thanks. Let's go, Max. Take a leg, Max. rock, and it's between the two things Shabool said it was between. It must be frog rock. I think I can see frog rock. I've got to use this elevator. That's gross, Sam. Sam. Well, wait for it. Sure gets dark quickly around here. I don't think this is a natural occurrence, Max. In fact, I think we're witnessing a celestial convergence of some sort. Do you think it'll make that rock look more like a frog? something, Sam. It's a Conroy world after all. If we ever get this rich and famous, I want you to shoot me, Sam. It'll be a pleasure.
This is a completely unusable thingamabob. It's a portrait of John Muir. Say, Sam, just who is John Muir? Who's John Muir? Hey, guys, this dope doesn't know who John Muir is. You gotta be kidding. What a maroon. What a dib cow poop. Sam, the dead animal heads are talking to me. Where? Up there. Well? But... You really shouldn't tell fibs about dead animals, Max. But... Stop bugging me. I'm admiring this portrait of John Muir. But who's John Muir? Do you really want to know? If you'll stop talking, sure. Okay. Hit it, boys. There once was a man named John Muir. A naturalist, noble and pure. His love for all beasties. The most and the leasties. Has never been equaled. Uh... For sure. Wow, it's Monster Truck Weekend! Happening every Sunday. Sunday! Sunday. Okay, I'm over the shock now. I'm not, but I'm sure my gentle naivete will survive. What you doing? Hang back, buddy, and observe my magic. Oops. Find out all you need to know? Maybe. I got a little lost in the troubleshooting chapter. Now that I've read that ponderous manual, I can move the robot around like this. I'm impressed. That's nothing. Watch this. Help me, Sam and Max! You're my only hope! That was gratuitous. Sorry. This might be more useful. cute little robot wants to follow its new programming, Sam. I don't recall giving it a cute little choice. There he goes. I'm ripe with anticipation. I thought I smelled something. What the? Al Pavlovian. And you should know. This is virtual reality? I may be sick.
I am the key master. Does that come with a dental plan? I don't know what you two critters are up to, but I want you out of here. Now! Bumpusville is proud to present the master of melody, the king of country, Mr. Entertainment, Conroe Bumpus. I hate floor shows. I remember my childhood in Brighton When dear old dad would bounce me on his knee He'd say, son, there ain't nothing as exciting as exposing beasts to inhumanity. That's why I mean. Happy to be king of the creatures. I'm proud to be the lord of the old. I love collecting things with grotesque features. It makes me feel like some Chaldean god. Oh, I trapped my first tiger before I could speak. Killed me a bear when I was free. And now with this Bigfoot and giraffe neck freak, I finally have a full menagerie. Hit it, boys! That's Western Star. Thank you, thank you. Your attention, please. Conroy Bubbis has left the building. circus with you. I'm feeling a little morally conflicted about taking Bruno back to the circus. I'm not. Let's go, you big lug. Stay away from him, you malefactor. I'm not a malefactor. I'm a lagomorph. Look, I'm not going back to the circus, and I'm waiting for a party. Oh, yeah, the Bigfoot party. Where is it? It's at Evelyn Morrison Savage Jungle Inn in picturesque Half-Life Nevada. Bigfoots. And their dates. Oh, um, I just hope this place has authentic savage tiki drinks with that authentic tiki tang.
You know, you look like a really scary version of Evelyn Morrison, famed B-movie star. I am Evelyn Morrison, you cur! Actually, I'm more of an Irish wolfhound than a cur. I've seen all your movies. My favorite was Robot Terror from Beyond the Galaxy. Is that the one where the alien says, Clam do Beretta Nimno? No, that's Vampirus in Prison. Oh, yeah. Would you like Evelyn Morrison's autograph? Actually, we just want to ask a few questions. Evelyn Morrison is always available for interviews. I'll get back to you later. Evelyn Morrison will be here. In the meantime, why not take some of these brochures? They have Evelyn Morrison's autograph on them, making them must-have collectibles. Thanks. Hmm. I hate it when you hum, Sam. It sounds like a high-voltage tower. These are pamphlets for the Mount Rushmore Dinosaur Tar Pit in Bungee Jumping National Park in North Dakota, and some place called the Celebrity Vegetable Museum in Goat Liver, Texas. I think I like the humming better. I can't talk to that. What do you make of this? Famed naturalist John Muir, huh? This looks like a zucchini squash to me. I can do this, but it'll take a short while. This place evokes a sense of wonder. You have to wonder. Quit that. So, what do you think? It fits you just fine. Ooh, stand back. She may pounce. It's a danger I face every day. So, Max, what do you think? A regular 007. Are you sure? Clint baby would be nervous. But get moving. I'm beginning to think you're stalling. Clint. Baby. Who's stalling? I'm just waiting for my buddy to come here and check out this spectacular view. I can't use these things together. I can't. It's a broken.
Hey, Max. Hey, what? I've got a job for those mighty incisors of yours. What? See that woolly mammoth? What about it? Stop playing dumb and get chomping. Fine work, Max. Now we've got more full woolly mammoth hair than we'll ever need, and we've learned an important lesson. Yeah, the woolly mammoths died of embarrassment. Great, now we've got a Stiltwalker's costume covered with tar and full woolly mammoth hair. Got the tooth. The whole tooth? Nothing but. I can't use these things together. <coughs> Where's my John Muir vegetable? squash that looks just like John Muir. Gee, thanks, man. Thanks. Bye. Stay out. Okay, I've attached Conroy Bumpus toupee to the Stiltwalker's costume. I can't pick that up. It says Igavas Nyeljitni. Close enough for jazz. Let's go. I guess we could try it on. Hey, that's a downright nice Sasquatch costume. I'll let you guys in with that one. Looks like something important's happening. Hundreds of years ago, it was become that our time was running out. Yet we were slow to heed the warnings of impending doom. The seemingly slow encroachment of mankind and all that as many living styles entail seemed like a vague and distant problem. A problem for future generations of Yeti to solve. Blithely, we sat back, ignoring our own inner call for action. Tradition and the status quo were our excuses for complacency. 
the certainty of not just losing our way of life, but possibly our very lives, and the demise of our entire race is now becoming a reality, a reality we can no longer choose to ignore. As it turns out, the humans and their technology are moving faster than we are, much faster than we had anticipated. And so we now face the final crisis. Unless we pull together, not just acknowledging the need for change, but embracing change not just with our hearts and our minds, but with our actions, we will fall behind, moving backward into extinction. Well, back to the music. Make a move, Yeti boy. Well, 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 a Bigfoot. Sure is a scrawny feller. A Bigfoot in the hand is worth two in the bush, Lee Harvey. Uh, sorry, boss. Think nothing of it, old chap. Now, be a good lad and pop off to the bus and get the net. Yes, sir, Mr. Bumpus. There's something you should know, Bumpus. You again? I left the net back in Bumpersville. Forget the net. We're gonna disguise ourselves as a Bigfoot. Why? So we can infiltrate their ranks, learn their ways, and pick them off at our leisure. Oh. And no funny stuff, dog boy. Yeah. Hey. I wouldn't move if I were you. Yeah. Hey, Max, why don't you make yourself useful? That was fun. Now future generations will be able to enjoy his atonal warblings. Are there any more shrimp balls back here? Who, who are you? We're the freelance police. We just saved your collective hash. Really? Then I guess it'd be okay to make you honorary Yeti chiefs. Walk this way. Can I have your attention, please? Although it's our tradition to allow only Bigfoots and their dates to these gatherings, these two have shown themselves worthy of our gratitude and our trust. These are na naive people. And so I'm granting them the title of Honorary Bigfoot Chief. So don't mess with them. That's it? Honorary Bigfoot Chief? Where's the cash? We don't want Bigfoot money, Max. It's probably made of tree bark or something. I know, but it's the principle of the thing. You may now wander freely about the convention floor without concern for your health. Gee, thanks. Think nothing of it. Follow me. Since you have proven yourselves to be friends of the Yeti, I have brought you here to share in our biggest secret. These great totem poles have been gathered from across the world and passed down from generation to generation of Bigfoots. Like fruitcake. We believe they hold the answer to our ultimate salvation, but the secret of their purpose is a riddle we've been unable to fathom. Sounds heavy. Like fruitcake. It's real heavy. Bruno. Like fruitcake. Why aren't you at the party? Who can party while their world comes to an end? Most of your mange-ridden brethren, apparently. Uh, I told you it was a bad idea to spike the punch. I thought it would loosen up everyone's imagination. No wonder we're facing extinction. Okay, guys, here's the situation. The Bigfoot way of life is rapidly going down the tubes. These totem poles might be able to save us, but A, we don't know what they mean, B, most of us have been partying too much to figure out what they mean. And C, we Bigfoots have a hard time operating in public, if you know what I mean. 
We wouldn't normally be asking for help, but we're desperate. Well, that's how we get most of our gigs, so why not? Great. Why don't you three get cracking on the totem poles? I'm going to the hot tub. Take a leg, Max. Could you bend this? Sure. Let's see. How's that? Great! That seems to have gotten the cork off. Shall we raise a toast to nuclear disarmament? With this poison? Don't be silly. That seems to have capped the snow globe. Can we try the vortex? Step right in. actually sucked in the pseudo-mystical energies of the mystery vortex. I was hoping something like that would happen. I think I figured out one of the totem poles. Let me see.
A handheld vortex. Good thinking. Thinking had nothing to do with it. Hey, Chiefy Poo, I think I figured out one of those baffling totem poles. A genuine dinosaur tooth. I figured it might be something like that. Did he say genuine? I believe we've deduced the secret of one of your totem poles. Hit me! The combination of man and nature. Inventive. Is it soup yet? Hey, Mr. Chief, we found something that might tie into your totem poles. Yeah? W what is it? <laughs> Hair growth tonic. Very resourceful. We just like stealing pillows. Well, that should do it, right? Nothing's happening, Sam. What's the story, Pops? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure you got the ingredients right, but... Of course. How silly of me. What? In order for the spell to work, we need a living Bigfoot sacrifice. It'd be a shame to lose one of these furry fellas, don't you think? Wait, I've got an idea. And it doesn't require high explosives. We're here. While he's gone, I'll go see if any of the Bigfoots wants to off themselves for the greater good. was one heck of an impressive display. And actually highly destructive to boot. Goodbye, Sam and Max. I'm not sure how I can ever thank you, so I guess I won't. Will you and Trixie be heading back into the forest to live an idyllic nature-oriented existence together? Oh no, we're going to Vegas to get hitched. It hasn't been trashed by all this crazy redwood nonsense. We want to be in a place where we can sort of blend in, live our lives, maybe even raise a family. Ew. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, you nutsy, primitive man-beast, you. You boys should be proud of what you've helped us achieve here today. You mean the wholesale destruction of the symbols of modern civilization in the western United States? You bet we are. Do we win a prize? Well, oh, why not? This medallion has been a part of my family for untold generations. Wear it in good health. Thanks, Chief. Max loves cheap sentiment. Mmm! Mm. Foil covered chocolatey goodness! What's wrong, Sam? I don't think the wizard has anything in that bag for me. Well, I could give you my ritual headdress that I bought at Snucky's last week.
I appreciate the gesture, but I've already got a hat. Well, that's fine, too. Farewell, Sam and Max. Remember, though the night be dark, the dawn yet shall awaken and annoy you. Have a nice day. I'll miss that old rascal. I'll miss the way he smelled like a bag full of damp hamster shavings. Just like Grandpa. Hey, we forgot to get paid. Don't worry, little buddy. I've got it all covered. I hope you're happy. With those idiots on the case, we'll probably never see Bruno again. Oh, lighten up, Burl. Hey, they're back. Did you find Bruno? Of course. Bruno! How can we ever repay you? The blank looks on your faces are the only reward we need. That and a big fat check. Would you settle for 3,000 skee-ball tickets? Close enough. Let's go, Max. You know, Max, I can't help thinking that we foolishly tampered with the fragile inner mechanisms of this little spaceship we call Earth. Gosh, Sam, a few hundred years of civilization have to be total just to ensure that a bunch of smelly quasi-human creatures have a safe haven for their disgusting lifestyles. Then so be it! You crack me up, little buddy. Burl, did Bruno always have four arms?